things that you did might actually be making your memory worse. Because think about that for a second. Not just your mood, not just your anxiety, but your actual ability to remember. Sounds like an excuse I made up in grade nine, right? But it's true, and there is a whole science behind it. Today, I'm going to walk you through how stress rewires your brain, affects your memory, and above all, how you can have smarters. Because the goal isn't just to survive school, work, or whatever chaos life throws at us, it's to thrive through it. So, let's start with what happens when you're stressed. Imagine this. You walk into an exam room, heart racing, palms sweaty, maybe you're ready not reviewing chapter 8. But why is your body reacting as if a lion just sent you the room? That's because evolution doesn't really know the difference between lions and grade 11 physics. What's happening inside of your body, every second you're stressed, is that your adrenal glands are pumping up a hormone called cortisol, your primary stress hormone. Cortisol kicks your body into gear, into your fight, flight, or forget response. It boosts energy, keeps you alert, and gets you ready to face a threat. That's great for running for clients. Not so great for multiple choice questions. But cortisol doesn't just affect our muscles. It goes straight for the brain. A 2022 study by Rizal and colleagues showed that cortisol targets the hippocampus, the prefrontal cortex, and the amygdala. And let me just translate that to the less scientific name side. The hippocampus is your brain's memory library. The prefrontal cortex is like your brain's librarian, and the amygdala is like the alarm bell. And when you're under stress, cortisol produces the whole system into chaos. The alarm rings louder. The librarian gets flustered, and the memory gets scattered all over the floor. A study by Chen et al. in 2016 found that stress physically changes the structure of neurons in your hippocampus. These neurons lose branches and their connectivity, and the brain, well, it becomes less efficient at storing or retrieving memories. So yes, if you've ever left an exam feeling like you've studied, but somehow have forgotten everything, you aren't imagining. This is where the science gets serious. When you stress for a long time, whether days, weeks, or months, stress stops helping and starts hurting. To be more, how about we take a look at a 2009 study by Tolliver? People were asked to learn word pairs, like stress, forget. During this process, some were stressed, while others weren't. The results? Well, a day later, the stress goal actually did slightly better at recalling the word pairs. But five weeks later, their memory was significantly worse. So, stress helped in the short term and hurt in the long run. Kind of like cramming the night before a test. You remember the next day, on your final exam, like, wait, what was most sentences again? Okay, still documents, let's talk mice. In 2022, Alt Koresh and colleagues put mice through something called chronic, unpredictable mild stress. Basically, mouse level chaos, random light flashes, case changes, and loud noises. No stability. After eight weeks, those poor mice had worth memory and visible brain damage. Their hippocampus had actually shrank. And yes, I know we're not mice, but if they forget where they left their cheese and we forget where we put our keys, I'd say the brain isn't too different. This is all because stress messes with the brain's energy supply. Cortisol blocks glucose, the fuel your brain runs on. It's like trying to charge your laptop with a potato. Even worse, chronic stress activates the HPA axis. That is your brain's stress highway. And when you're under stress, your brain starts releasing these angry little proteins called cytokines. They cause inflammation, basically turning your brain into a floppy, moody, forgetful version of itself. Plus, and this is where it gets interesting, not all stress is bad. A little bit of stress can actually boost memory, at least in the short term. Another hormone, norepinephrine, think of it as adrenaline stuffing, gets released alongside cortisol. And norepinephrine, well, it boosts glucose metabolism in the brain, aiding memory formation. That's why you might remember every second of a car accident, but not what you had for breakfast the day earlier. So, your course of stress can help you encode emotional or intense memories. 
But the key word here is short. Like a shot of espresso, it's only good in small doses. Drink too much, and suddenly your hands are shaking, and you're arguing with yourself in the mirror. Now, I know we've been talking about cortisol like it's the only one wrecking everything. But let's be honest, stress is rarely so loud. What's really happening is more like a hormonal relay race. It starts in the brain, and it sets off a whole team of hormones. TRH, ACTH, and then finally cortisol, each having their own special tails in the mix. Here's how it plays out. You're spending a class, and a teacher says, pop quiz. Instantly, your hypothalamus fires off CRH, corticotropin releasing a hormone. That's your brain's version of sounding the alarm. CRH then tells a pituitary class to release ACTH. That's adrenal corticotropin hormone. An H so long, it sounds like I'm up here for a spelling bee. ACTH then signals the adrenal glands to release cortisol. But, and here's what often gets overlooked. CRH and ACTH don't just disappear after the jaws are done. In fact, they stick around, especially during prolonged stress. And they mess with the same memory systems as cortisol. CRH in particular has a direct effect on the hippocampus and amygdala. High levels of CRH can make it difficult for your brain to encode emotional memories. It kind of gets your librarian flustered and messes up where it stores the folders. And ACTH, it's not just the middle man, it's more like a micromanager. When ACTH levels stay high, it keeps your brain in a heightened stress state. That's great for fleeing from lines. Not so great for trying to remember what side of the thesis was. Now, let's talk about glutamate, your brain's main excitatory neurotransmitter. Glutamate, under normal conditions, helps you to focus, to learn, and to make connections between ideas. But when stress sticks around, cortisol causes an overload of glutamate. And too much glutamate, that's when things get dangerous. It overstimulates your neurons, a phenomenon known as excitotoxicity. And this, well, this damages the very synapses responsible for memory. And this overstimulation also messes with long-term potentiation, the process in which your brain strengthens memory pathways. So even if you do study, your brain may not file that information properly. It's like trying to say your TEDx speech without any Wi-Fi. So yeah, stress isn't just cortisol from a tantrum. It's an entire hormonal drama show where everyone's talking over each other and no one's listening. And unless something breaks the cycle, your brain is stuck in crisis mode. Not because you're weak, but because your biology is doing exactly what it evolved to do, just in the wrong setting. A pop quiz isn't a predator, but your brain doesn't always know that. The silver lining? We're not stuck with this. Just as threats can build up over time, resilience can too. So, take a deep breath. It's not all doom, forget it. Your brain is plastic, and not the cheap kind. It can rebuild, rewire, and bounce back. So, here are the three science back things you can do to protect your memory. First, breathe like you mean it. Even just five minutes a day, breathe in, breathe out. Not doom scrolling, just breathe in. Then, move your body. You don't need a gym membership. Just flail your arms around until your brain says thank you. I'm going to repeat that just because it's so important. Move your body. Join a sports team. Go on a walk. Whatever. Just move. And then finally, once you've done all of that, get some real sleep. Your brain wasn't designed to handle quantum physics and cat videos on three hours of rest. And I only said three things. What the heck? Here's one more. Eat real food. Omega-3s, fruits, and veggies not the first thing out of the vending machine. Your brain isn't big, it just wants its nutrients. So, what's the key takeaway? Stress isn't always the villain. At times, it drives us to grow, to take action, and to recall things more quickly. But when it lingers too long, that's when the real problems arise. Chronic stress can disrupt your memory, your concentration, and even how you see yourself. It alters your brain in ways that leave you feeling scattered, drained, and as if you're perpetually forgetting something. Probably because you are. But here's the good news. You are stuck in this. You can overcome. 
You can train your brain to deal with stress more effectively with quality sleep, physical activity, nourishing food, and social connections. Simple, tangible steps. You can channel stress as motivation rather than allowing it to ignite chaos. Because let's be real, the aim isn't to eliminate stress entirely. That's unrealistic. The goal is learning to live with stress and still remember where you put your keys. So take care of your brain, be kind to it, feed it, and let it rest. And hopefully, when life gets stressful, as it will, you'll be ready. Thanks for listening. I believe. Really